you state repeatedly that we are stealing from the future. What is the nature of this theft? Resources that we use today, since uh, they include uh, a preponderance of non-renewable resources, are resources that will be unavailable to posterity. That's the sense in which we're stealing directly from the future. We're also, by changing the conditions of life inadvertently through our waste disposal and so on, uh, making um, areas that were marvelously habitable and uh, pristine, aesthetically pleasing and so on, much less pleasing for posterity. So posterity will not have some of the opportunities that we've taken for granted. You refer to the age of exuberance. What do you mean by this expression? Ecologists use the word exuberance to refer to the kind of rapid growth that it can occur when a species uh, comes into a, an environment that, where they had not been present before and the conditions are ripe for their uh, flourishing. And so they grow exuberantly, uh, meaning rapidly and uh, without constraint. And uh, uh, if you permit a bit of anthropomorphism so that we can think of a plant species that has invaded a suitable area that it didn't previously have access to as enjoying the uh, opportunity for rapid growth. Uh, there's, there's two meanings to the word exuberance. Exuberance can be just that impersonal, ecological, rapid growth uh, benefit of the uh, uh, circumstances, but there's emotional exuberance too. We feel exuberant when things are going well for us. And uh, if you can imagine the new uh, population of uh, shrubbery or new population of trees that have come into an area uh, by the seeds having been transported there somehow, uh, having emotions that humans can have, why you can imagine them being exuberant. That's what I meant. We, we did live in a time when uh, the world was uh, so abundantly endowed with the things that humans could use that we, we grew exuberantly. And now we're in a post-exuberant time because we've overdone it. You say that our species has used two main approaches to expand its global impact, take over and draw down. Could you explain what these are? Well, for example, when Europeans began migrating to the New World, uh, we were taking over for European ways of life, areas that had previously been occupied by a population of people who were still living by a Stone Age culture, largely. And uh, they didn't have the advantages of firearms until they began getting them from our European ancestors. Uh, but they, in turn, had migrated to this hemisphere from Asia across the Bering Land Bridge and so on. And they had taken over for human use areas that had previously been available entirely for non-human species. Uh, that's the takeover method. When one species moves into an area and takes over uh, resources that previously would have been used entirely by other species. The drawdown method that has superseded that in our way of thinking has to do with our drawing down the finite deposits of uh, non-renewable resources, the fossil fuels for example, mineral ores, uh, substances that do not get replenished in an annual growth cycle like agricultural products do. and. Uh, the drawdown method enabled us to live more abundantly, uh, have a higher level of prosperity and so on when it was new. But if you keep that method going long enough, you exhaust uh, resources. We're beginning to have depletion problems now in uh, a sufficient scale that we're beginning to be aware of them. We've, we started depleting things right from the start, but uh, as somebody has said, uh, uh, you start dying as soon as you're born. Uh, the, th the same is true of civilizations as well as of individuals. But uh, not to make too much of a point of that uh, little simile, uh, we did start depleting things as soon as we started using them. 
now we're beginning to feel the effects of that accumulated depletion. Many people think that Thomas Malthus was overly pessimistic about population food supplies. However, you believe that Malthus understated life's perils. What point were you trying to make? Malthus argued that it was possible for the human species to uh, grow exponentially, to increase its numbers exponentially, whereas the food supply was more likely to uh, be a, a kind of a linear trend rather than an escalating exponential trend. Unfortunately, uh, most readers of Malthus focus too much, as he did, upon food, as, as if food were always going to be the limiting resource. As we've learned to use many, many resources other than those that we put into our bodies, uh, any resource that exists in finite quantity could be the limiting resource. So in that sense, you could argue that Malthus was uh, not sufficiently uh, realistic in uh, paying too much attention to one kind of resource and not to all the resources that we make use of. Also, Malthus seemed to think that, well, I should begin by saying that he, um, he really was not interested in predicting the future. He was interested in showing that uh, population would increase exponentially if unchecked or when unchecked, as he put it. Most people forget that pair of words, when unchecked. Uh, populations usually are not unchecked. There are checks that operate on them. Malthus was too glib in assuming that the checks would work perfectly and that it was not possible for us to exceed carrying capacity. Um, we can exceed carrying capacity, but only temporarily by using an accumulation of resources that have been stockpiled somehow. Uh, when we exceed carrying capacity and we get into this period of a carrying capacity deficit, then we've got troubles coming. You say that the Industrial Revolution was the prelude to future collapse. Why do you think humankind's industrialization will end badly? Because industrialization committed us to the use of uh, non-renewable resources, particularly non-renewable fuels, energy supplies. We, uh, what, what, industri uh, what industrialization really did was to commit us to using prehistoric photosynthesis. The photosynthesis that was done by vegetation that grew upon the surface of the planet uh, millions of years before humans existed some of which got buried then and transformed by geological processes into the fossil fuels, coal, petroleum, natural gas. Those carbon-rich substances, um, they are combustible. That's not their only property, but that's an important property from the standpoint of Homo sapiens who, when we began digging these things up, discovered, aha, they burn. Uh, we can do things with the energy that we release by burning them. Uh, we just didn't face the, because they were so abundant, we didn't face the fact that their abundance was less than infinite. It had to be uh, finite because it's only part of a finite planet. And so uh, we headed ourselves in a direction of depending upon ever escalating use, ever increasing uh, use, of quantities of stuff that only exists in finite accumulated uh, quantity and when it's all gone that way of life cannot e continue to exist. Well, that way of life is going to be throttled down long before the stuff is all gone just when it gets harder and harder to get and we did of course in the beginning decades of the industrial era uh, go after the most accessible portions of the deposit of fossil fuels. And uh, now we're living in a time when we're having to drill deeper and deeper to get our oil or our natural gas. Uh, we're removing mountaintops to get at more of the coal and so on. So we're devastating the very planet upon which our life is uh, confined. <laughs>